Hi, it's Money44 here and today I would like to invite you to a review of the Perron for P90 MOSFET unit. The MOSFET for the review was provided by Perron Airsoft. It doesn't matter whether your P90 has a squishy trigger, the contacts are broken or you're doing a lot of tuning and need to be able to manage the operation of the replica, because for example it shoots double and semi. Installing a in MOSFET is a good solution for each of these reasons, and this is where Perron comes up with the rescue, with a system dedicated to P90 replicas in the Marui standard. In today's material I will show you how to install the unit and what functions it has, but as always we will start with a little unboxing. In a small white cardboard box we will find a card with a set of stickers with the Perron logo, programming cheat sheets and QR codes for the instructions. Main board, a set of necessary parts as two wire harnesses, new cutoff lever, trigger magnet and magnetic sensor base, and all needed screws. In separate bag you will find a control plate and a trigger plate. We also have a shorter net programming manual in a form of a plastic Ace of Space card. The unit is dedicated for Marui P90 replicas and should fit most replicas available on the market. The exceptions is the P90 from GNG and Crytek. In case of the models from King Arms and Novridge, minor modifications may be required, information about which can be found in the manual. I will install the unit in the BY810 replica from Double Bell, because it's in the Marui standard. I take out the magazine and take out the front with the barrel and the chamber. Then I remove the stock foot plate giving me access to two screws holding the shell support. After unscrewing them, I can pull out the bracket, I will also need it with the screws later. Now I can take out the entire gearbox. I'll get to it in a moment, first I'll just take out the trigger bar, which I won't need anymore. I move to the gearbox, where I need to unscrew three screws holding the contact block assembly. Now I disconnect the wires from the motor. The operation of the contact itself is quite interestingly designed. When we press the trigger in semi-mode, the trolley is pushed to the contacts where are the shorter net. When a shot is fired, the cutoff lever drops the carriage, so we have to release the trigger and press it again to fire another shot. In auto mode, however, the trigger can continue to move and closes the second set of contacts. Cutoff lever drops the carriage from the first pair of contacts, but the current still flows through the second pair and the replica fires as long as we keep the trigger pressed. Ok, let's replace this obsolete thing with a 21st century solution. From this side of the shell, I start by removing the cutoff lever spring and unscrewing it. And I will still need the spring and the screw later. The main board has optical sensors that will detect the movement of the new cutoff lever thanks to which the system will know about the completed cycle. I screwed the board to the shell with a long screw from the set. On the other side I put the sleeve and tighten it with a nut. I make sure that the unit is straight and I can install the new cutoff lever with the spring that I previously removed. I screw the lever with the old screw and it's ready. Now it won't just stop the fire in semi, but will inform the system when the cycle is, has been completed, thanks to which we gain a lot of possibilities, which we'll talk about in a moment. The next thing I need to do is to screw two screws from the set on the front of the shell. Then I can contact the wires to the motor. To do this I bend the plugs and put it on the contact in the motor. I do the operation on both sides and make sure to insert these plugs all the way and that the wires do not go beyond the motor. All that's left to do is to connect the cables. They are the same on each side, so you can't do it wrong. Just remember to connect them all the way so they don't get loosened up by vibrations. Now I put the magnet on the trigger. Just push it into place and if there's any play, we can tighten that screw a bit or even glue the magnet to the trigger. The next step is to install the gearbox in the replica. I need to pull the front wire through here, so to make it easier, I made a small hook out of the wire. I put it on the cable and I can easily pull the cables to the front. 
It is very important to run the cable through the left side, otherwise it may block the gearbox. I can put on the gearbox backplate, pull the wires through it and secure it with two screws. Normally I would screw the control plate with the right screw, but since I want to have access to the quick spring chain system and I don't want the plate to be bent, I will leave it loose, which Perron recommends doing in such a situation. I plug in the board and it's ready. All that remains is to install the rest of the trigger detection system parts. I start from the base of the plate, remove two screws and then place the base on the protrusions in the body. The element falls into place nicely. Now I attach the trigger plate and then slide it between the body piece and the base. I do the same with the second board. I set the detection plate so that the arrow on it matches the arrow on the trigger and screw the plate in place. I screw on the second plate and it's ready. If the base and the plates move, you can additionally lock it by screwing these two screws. It's tight in my case, so I don't have to move them all. The system itself has been installed. I can move to the trigger calibration. After connecting the power supply, the system will beep once. I enter the programming mode by pressing the button on the control board twice, which is signaled by the system with another beep. Now I press the button 9 times to enter the trigger calibration mode marked with the purple and blue diode light. I set the selector to save. Press the trigger all the way and press the button on the board. Change the mode to semi, I press the trigger all the way again and press the button on the board again. I do the same with the full auto mode and the trigger has been calibrated. I can now test the trigger operation. As you can see, everything works correctly. Let's see what functions the system has. We switch between functions by pressing the button on the board and we change the options in the functions using the trigger. We'll start with the firing modes. By default, we have semi and full auto mode. Next is only semi. Only binary, I shot is fired every time you press and release the trigger. Semi and burst, of which the burst can be adjusted between 2 and 5 shots in a series. And burst and full auto. Another function is active braking. Thanks to this function, for example, we will not have double shots in the semi. We have 5 levels to choose from. Next is precocking function, that is the pre-tensioning of the spring, which ensures a faster response to the trigger in the semi mode. We have as many as 8 levels, but if we set it too high, the replica may fire twice despite AB turned on. After finishing shooting, we release the spring by holding the trigger in semi until we hear a beep and a second shot will be fired. Another function is to set the trigger sensitivity for both modes separately. We have 5 levels and the higher the value the shorter the trigger distance before the shot. This is what it looks like at maximum sensitivity. But there is no harm in setting for example semi to max and auto to minimum, which will make the shot in semi go quickly, but to shoot in auto you will have to press the trigger all the way. The next function is rope reduction. If your replica shoots too fast in foul auto, we can slow it down. There are 5 levels, the last of which slows the replica by maximum of about 30%. Another function is the Lipo Lion R alarm. The replica automatically detects what battery we are using, and when the voltage on the cell drops below 3.7 volts, it will inform us about it with a short sound signal every 30 seconds. The DSG mode is dedicated to use with DSG gears. It will help in the proper operation of the system. And the system itself is compatible with any type of gears. And these are all the available modes. As you can see, the system has a lot of useful functions. However, if we cannot remember everything, I recommend sticking the cheat sheet from the set on the replica. 
In this case, a good place will be inside the stock butt plate. The Perron 4P90 system is an interesting option for people who want to breathe new life into their P90. The unit is very well thought and equally well executed. The number of elements and steps during assembly may be overwhelming, but honestly, it's one of the simplest systems to install. We do not have to open gearbox, in most P90s we don't need to modify anything, and after doing everything accordingly to the instructions, the system simply works as it should. The magnetic trigger detects system works properly and allows us to adjust the sensitivity. The cycle detection with a lever that replaces the cut lever also works as it should. And the system itself gives us a lot of functions to program. For me, just changing the trigger sensitivity and setting the pre cocking made the replica much more responsive and simply more pleasant to use. And I must add that apart from the installed MOSFET, it is completely stock replica. So in my eyes, is a product worth recommending, which is what I can also say about everything from Perron. That's all for today. Let me know if you liked today's material and if it was useful. And what do you think about the Perron MOSFET dedicated to P90 replicas? And if you are already use it, how it works for you? And for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.